More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Welcome to Facebook Live, More Heart Than Talent, Tuesday. So we have a lot of action going on at the GMS studios here today. I have Ray Cataline right here. Ray, step into the frame here. Ray is here for the Millionaire Experience. Ray is here with me for two weeks on a apprentice program. I have Corey Blissett right here with me, who's at the GMS studio. Corey has just moved to California. Her and her husband, Corey Blissett Cohen, her and her husband, Greg, who are first class clients of mine. Corey is here mentoring with Chris Shar for the GMS marketing team. And we have Chris Shar right here, Chris, father of five, rock star internet marketer. So a lot of action and productivity at the GMS studio. So we're going to go ahead and commence with. The Facebook Live here to or the Facebook Live here today, more than talent. Thank you, everyone. Thank We're going to bring it on. So today's today's content is dedicated to consciousness, to understanding cause and effect, why you do what you do, how to separate your feelings from events, but most importantly, the topic for today's call is the seven traits of successful leadership, and really understanding that. Leaders can lead from the front, leaders can lead from the back, but a leader is a leader and a leader grower. So before I move into that content, a few quick announcements. This Saturday, I have the distinction and the privilege of being one of my favorite places in the United States. I have a lot of favorite places. I will be in Montana next year. I want to thank Beth Henning for taking me up there to Missoula, so that's going to be awesome. But I'm going to be in Orange County, California, two of my favorite people. Marissa and Doug Campbell, rock stars and rock star entrepreneurs, multiple business owners, great creativity and innovation. They're in the car industry, network marketing, direct sales industry. Marissa has a deep background in the restaurant industry. A lot, a lot of content that I'm going to be delivering this Saturday. So if you're in Los Angeles and my heart goes out to anyone who's experienced any loss or tragedy in the fire, I I have lived in California for 32 years, so I definitely understand it. So this Saturday, Orange County, California. So be there. I'll also be in Los Angeles December 29th with another rock star friend client, Brittany Cara. And then right after the new, right after Thanksgiving, and a lot of gratitude for that holiday coming up, I will be in Saddlebrook, New Jersey on December 1st. December 15th, I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia with Carlotta Davis. Terrytown, New York, December 22nd, wrapping it up right before Christmas. So those are a few of the announcements. And love to uh, also attract new clients who are seeking insight, wisdom, and consciousness. I offer free 20-minute coaching sessions. So these are free 20-minute coaching sessions that you can take advantage of anytime. Contact me on Facebook. And I will get back to you immediately. I will return your response. I will respond to your response immediately. So with that, we're going to move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. Now, today I have an outline that I, my team and I create. And this outline is a really good outline. It's called The Seven Traits of Successful Leaders Lead to Succeed. Now, I've, I've been a leader all of my life. I was the captain of my little league teams. I started, I was a captain of my seventh and eighth grade football team. I ran track in high school, played baseball. I played four varsity sports, 
for six years, two in junior high, four in high school, and then two in college. I played college basketball. Now, I was not the captain of my basketball in team in college, but I was in high school. I was a leading scorer. I was a leading scorer one of the last two years. So I've been there, done there. And so leadership is an experience. And to become a leader, you have to be able to lead yourself. Unfortunately, most people have challenges leading themselves because of the anxiety about an outcome that has not happened. And there's a lot of anxiety that is based on this. I'm not sure if I can be accountable. I'm not sure if I can be responsible. I don't want to offend someone. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to fail. I'm not sure if I can handle success. There's a lot of stories that many people talk themselves out of when it comes to leadership. And also, leadership creates a lot of overwhelmed feelings based on unresolved issues from the past. Now, if you've never led, that doesn't mean you can't become a leader. And leadership, frankly, is influence. Back in 1995, I was introduced to then brand new content by an aspiring writer named John Maxwell. In a bookstore in Dallas, Texas, I bought a book that my friend recommended to me called Developing the Leader Within You. That was Maxwell's first book. And then his second book was called Developing the Leaders Around You. And I bought those two books in succession, highlighted them, read them. But I also knew a lot about being a leader. My father is a Hall of Fame basketball coach in the state of Iowa. Won 400 victories in two different states, 357 in Iowa, 43 in Missouri. So he was the leader of young men, and I got to grow up in that, and I got to watch how my father would inspire his young, his young basketball students. My father was also a track coach. He was also a baseball coach, but his niche was coaching high school basketball. So I aspired to be a leader as a young boy. I was in Boy Scouts. I never went through all the way to Eagle Scouts because Boy Scouts conflicted with playing Little League and then high school baseball. But in Eagle Scouts, Weeblos, all those situations, I was preparing myself to be and stay a leader. Leadership is influence. And the more that you can influence yourself, the more you understand persuasion, the easier it will be for you to break through. But one of the situations you want to let go of is the story you tell yourself about why you can't, why you're not the degree of difficulty it will take to be a leader. Leadership is responsibility, and that means you're able to respond to the stimulus. But what most of society does is they react to the stimulus, and that reaction takes them into these three energies that I speak so frequently about in my live events. Now, these are three different energies driven by a series of emotions that create a set of feelings that keep you overwhelmed. So first of all is anxiety. It's the lowest level of transmutal energy, followed by fear, and then the proverbial doubt. So these are the three energies that keep people doing what they do, anxiety, fear, and doubt. Now, this energy creates a corresponding response emotionally that also has an attractor factor back to it. So when you're in anxiety, fear, and doubt, what you're doing is you're shutting off 50% of your muscle group. When you're in any type of these energy... Any type of anxiety, fear, and doubt also shortens your vision emotionally and physically because of how overwhelmed you get, meaning that you miss out on a lot of opportunities that are right there in your field of vision, but because you're so overwhelmed, you miss the moment of the opportunity to capitalize on the situation. And this is what keeps many people from leading. Now, let's take a look at this, the ability to lead self. And if you don't have the ability to lead self, then you will spend a lot of your time in a chronic state of avoidance. And if you're a chronic avoider, that means you're a procrastinator. And procrastination in Latin means to avoid, procrastinare. Now for you to have a better understanding, be aware, be in consciousness, be in trust and know is a skill. So he, here are four words that you begin to incorporate in your ability to lead. The first word is aware. The second word is trust. The third word is no. So you want to be able to be aware, trust, no, and you also want to be able to be in a state of consciousness. Now, consciousness means you're aware. Aware, trust, no, and conscious. So when you're conscious, you're awake, you're aware, you understand. And that's the last word under stand. So these four words represent this word consciousness aware, trust, no. And aware, trust, know, and understand. Those four words comprise the term consciousness. When you're consciously aware, you're able to lead self. 
you will not be able to lead others until you can lead yourself. And this is the, one of the main contradictions of people who want to be a coach. You can go out and be a coach and become certified. I have a certified coaching program. You can go right online today. You can go right under my, my products and services, and you can find coaching. You can go right there today, and for $2,000, you can purchase a course that will allow you to become a certified life coach. It's a very comprehensive product that shows you how to become a coach. But you have to be able to lead yourself. You can become certified, but being certified doesn't mean that you will be productive. Being a leader means you're accountable, you're responsible. Now, those words are not synonymous. However, they are similar. Responsible means ability to respond. Reaction means reacting to the stimulus and continue to perpetuate the same set of feelings over and over on a conditioned behavior process that keeps you overwhelmed in fear, anxiety, and doubt. And when you're able to separate your feelings from the events, then you can start to be and stay responsible, ability to respond to the stimulus at hand, meaning that you're more flexible, you have a better understanding, you're aware, you're able to let go, and you're able to be here and be now. That's called the present. It's not a how do I situation, it's an I am state. The more that you I am, I am, emo I am emotional, I am letting go, I am responding rather than reacting, now you have a different set of reflexes. You give off a different corresponding emotional state called consciousness. That's awareness, understanding, knowing, and trust. Now when you're in trust, you know. When you know, you will not be denied. When you know, you are certain. And it's that very sense of certainty that's what creates a belief. Now, now, leaders are able to instill a belief in a team or a culture or in a place called mentoring or in a place called mastermind, a mastermind of one or more of like mind coming together for a common cause. So if you're building a team or a culture, your, your income is going to be derived by being able to market a product, sell a product, be able to share the value, be able to deliver the service that com comes with whatever you are marketing or selling. But if your income is, respons is, is responsible, or if your income is going to be derived by creating a team, then it's going to be your responsibility to be responsible to lead that team. And that means you have clearly defined short-term goals about what you're responsible for. You must also understand that you're not responsible for other people's success. You're responsible for your actions. You're responsible for your feelings. And you're responsible to understand what is required of you to be a leader in any given endeavor. Now you can lead from the front, you can lead from the back, you can lead from the middle, but being a leader once again is influence. And that influence that you require to understand is being able to lead yourself, breaking this down to this, what you do daily. Now if what you do daily is effective, there's a higher probability that you can teach it. But you're going to have challenges teaching theory unless, unless you're just really good at being a teacher. But you want to be able to teach what you know, teach what you live, and be able to showcase that to other aspiring leaders. This is when you start to become a leader grower. Your, your income is going to be a direct reflection of your duplication. And your duplication is going to be a direct reflection of your ability to attract your reality, people in situations that will fulfill a set of feelings driven by cause, meaning, and purpose. Now the first point in today's what, we, what does it require to be the seven traits of a successful leader? The first one is starts with self, self-directed. Now, being self-directed means you know what to do. So in a state of no, you're operating in an unconscious consciousness. Here it is, K-N-O-W. So no starts with I. Now when I know, that means self. That means I know. So that means that this also represents no doubt. So when you know there's no doubt because when there's no doubt now you're now you're in the flow and in that type of energy you're going to transmute your feelings in a, in a set of emotions called consciousness. Now that consciousness is an awareness because you know you don't doubt and in that state there's no worst case scenario. You're not focused on worst case scenarios you're focused on results. So in the when it comes to having a vision when you're a leader, you'll have a longer term vision, but more importantly, you'll have a shorter term vision. So the vision that you have is more like this. It's more, it's more tunneled down like this. You're looking there and you're looking there. You have a short term vision and a longer term vision. The longer term vision is, is six months, 12 months, 14 months, 18 months, 20, 
24 months. I mean, that's, that, that's the longer term vision. But the vision you require right now is what you accomplish today. Because what you accomplish today or what you don't accomplish today compounds. So if you, if you continue to do the same thing over and over and are disappointed, that means you're, addic you're creating an addiction tolerance. But if what you're doing daily is starting to bring results, you're living in the solution, and you're self-directed and self-driven, it also creates a production tolerance, meaning that you start to be and stay productive. You're not telling yourself a series of stories. You're not overwhelming yourself. You're not talking yourself out of opportunities. You're not in a worst case scenario. You're not in rejection and abandonment. You're able to sit down at a chair. You're at a desk. You're in a, direct, you're in a dedicated block of time in a dedicated space that you can create repetition and experience over and over. Great leaders do not whine. They do not focus on what they do not have. My upline, I can't believe it, in my team, in my business. A leader overcomes a situation like this because a leader has purpose. And when your purpose is to succeed or your purpose is to create a result or live in a solution, then facts don't matter. The fact may be you don't have an ideal situation, but you don't focus on the fact, you focus on results. Now, what people who live in their left brain do, people who live in their analytical, egoic mind, they spend a lot of time finding flaws. Leaders don't find flaws. Leaders live in the solution. Leaders create results. Now, I've been in businesses before where the situation around me was not ideal. I didn't have the right ideal support system. I was in a new company, but I focused on the opportunity. I didn't focus on the facts. I focused on I was in a startup business that had a relatively good product and service. I felt I was in the right place at the right time, and I had a reason to succeed. I had a lot of debt. I was way behind. I had pennies in my pocket, zero in bank account, creditors about to call, way behind in my dreams. That's a Jim Rohn quote from one of Jim Rohn's great speeches in the, in the 90s. That means pennies in your pocket, zero in your bank account, creditors calling way behind in your dreams, and that's where I was in 1995. I did not focus on how much debt I had. I didn't focus on how, how messed up my life was. I focused on the solution. I focused on a result. And I knew that that year was going to be my breakthrough year that I required to change who and what, who and what I attracted. I felt I'd attracted a great business opportunity. Now the next thing I knew I required was to be and stay productive. And I factored in my attractor factor that I would figure that out sometime over the course of that year. I was focused on changing who and what I attracted. And that, that becomes a skill called attraction. And attraction is a science. It's not an accident. It's not luck. It is a skill. And that will, that will be determined in your leadership ability, who and what you attract. Few qualities of a leader, leaders are not controlling. Leaders create suggestions, not absolutions. Leaders don't tell people what to do. They lead by example and they see who follows. Leaders are able to detach themselves from other people's outcomes. Even though we may want the best for people, you have to realize that a large percent of anyone who follows you will not follow through because of their inability to commit. A large percent of the population is commitment phobic, and your objective is to attract your reality a few like-minded success seekers that you can collaborate with to create results in any given endeavor. Now, when you're in that space, you are in the zone, and it's that kind of zone that that energy becomes very attractive. It becomes very effective because people begin to feel you. And this doesn't come from figuring it out. This doesn't make sense. Being a great leader is not about making sense. It's about leading. It's about influence. Influence is nonsensical. Influ influence can't be explained. Influ influence is experienced. This is why teams win Super Bowls with less talent than teams who should win. And winning is not about shooting. Winning is about winning. Winners win because they win. They win whenever they win because they're winners. It becomes a habit. It becomes a routine. It becomes a culture. It becomes being self-directed, self-driven. So that means that you're able to be creative and innovative. You can look at the situation and you understand it. You know it. You don't require someone to give you direction because you are self-directed. Number two on the list of seven characteristics of an effective leader is effective communication. That means your communication style is condensed, it's shorter. Your word choices have more, have more impact. Your word choices are persuasive. Your, your word choices are about results and decisions. Your word choices aren't filled with kind of, sort of, guess. Your word choices are about commitment. Leaders commit and they attract other committed, committed like-minded success seekers. People who aren't attempting or trying, tomorrow was really yesterday, to figure it out. 
And this type of energy becomes attractive, it becomes effective, it becomes persuasive, and this kind of energy has a centrifugal power that picks up a space called syn synergy, and that synergy can also create synchronicity. That means when you're in alignment with. Align means one with. When you're one with your clarity, you're one with your clearly defined short-term goals, you have a clearly defined game plan, and you have a daily method that you operate in, you have a much higher probability of creating the outcome that you seek. But when you wing it, get ready to get ready, you're uncertain, spend a lot of your time getting overwhelmed, and you have three businesses that you're not sure which one you should be doing, and you have anxiety about letting two of them go, because you might miss out, well, all you're doing is overwhelming yourself. People do not follow overwhelmed leaders. People follow people who lead by example, people who are exemplary in their skills. And you don't have to be a super talented entrepreneur to be a leader, but you're required to have influence of self. And if you can lead by example, and your example is relatively good, you're going to attract a few people over a period of time that you can collaborate with. Number three is responsible. Now, responsible means ability to respond. Now, when you're responsible, it means you're on time. You show up on time. You're accountable. You don't miss appointments. You don't make excuses. You do what you say, and you say what you do. You follow through. You follow up. You're accountable. You're responsible. Now, in that type of energy, that's commitment energy. That's I won't be denied energy. That's energy that every single day is a method. It's a routine. It's a system. It's not boring. It's who you are and what you do. Shiny object seekers have problems being responsible. People who live in a MMO might miss out. F fear of missing out. This type of personality has challenges because they like to wing it. Wingers don't attract winners. It just doesn't work that way. An addicted winger has no system, no routine. No responsibility. They live on talent alone. They just factor, well, my talent will put me through. It doesn't because the, your adversary will eat your lunch because that type of person, your, your, your competition is probably a lot more committed than you are. They may not have as much talent as you, but commitment beats talent all the time because the committed person has a repetition and, an, and, a repetition and experience that they are responsible for over and over the ability to respond. Number four is accountability. Now, responsibility and accountability are similar yet distinctly different. Being responsible means you show up. Being accountable means you create the results. And as you're able to, accountable comes from count, act, count, is you're able to count your results. You're able to count your victories. You're able to, and it means you have a system and a routine that you consistently follow through. You understand the law of averages. You understand the law of numbers. You understand numerology. You understand numismatic law. And instead of making sense, you understand. And it's that responsibility accountability factor that starts to create the compounded effect. And here's what the compounded effect looks like as you're going through this process. Two plus two equals not four, but 16. Now this is called a QL. That's a quantum leap. It means, here's the equation, sum greater than whole of parts. So meaning that sum is greater than whole of part. So when 2 plus 2 equals 16, that means that the compounded effect is happening. That's what leaders create. Leaders attract to their reality other like-minded success seekers they can attract to their reality, they can create results and collaborate with. Your objective is to be able to attract a few like-minded success seekers who are self-directed, self-driven, self-actualized, and have self-esteem. Now, if you, can, if you can duplicate this two or three times in a calendar year, you will start to create the compounded effect. But if you're in a business that you just keep attracting the same thing over and over and over and over again, and you are chronically complaining about it, don't understand why you do what you do, then you'll fulfill your disappointment. But as you move into a place called consciousness, you let go of the cause that creates the effect. You have a better understanding, better awareness of why you do what you do. You learn to separate your feelings from events. That's letting go. You understand the feelings that you repress and the feelings that you suppress. And then you stop escaping and ha ha hanging out and hiding out. And you actually move into action and you're in action daily, and it's in that action that you learn the repetition and experience. That's when you become accountable for self. 
Before you're ever accountable for anyone else or responsible for anyone else, you master your own emotions so you can be and stay accountable. You master your emotions so you can be and stay responsible. Now, responsible, once again, means you're able to respond to the stimulus. It means you don't overreact, don't get overwhelmed, don't panic, don't have anxiety about an outcome that hasn't happened. You're not in rejection and abandonment energy before you start. You understand the law that govern numbers. Like, for instance, yesterday, I spoke to five people who didn't purchase from me. Nobody rejected me. No one abandoned me. No one violated me. None of this was bad. I didn't say the wrong thing. I didn't offend anyone, and I wasn't overwhelmed. That's the law of average. So however, by the end of the day, my tally sheet showed that I created results, even though those five didn't buy, someone else did. I mean, that's how the universe operates. So if you want the universe to reward you, the universe will reward you if you're in the flow of it. The universe will not reward you if you haven't paid the dues. Now, what many success seekers think and they want is they want the universe to reward them, but they haven't paid the dues. They're not in the repetition and experience process of learning the skills. They haven't devoted the 1,000-hour habit, the 2,000-hour habit, to ever create the 10,000-hour habit. 10,000 hours, give or take, is an equation that comes down to a self-acclaimed expert is, is devoted 10,000 hours to a craft, to a hobby, to a vocation, to any situation so that they can become a self-acclaimed expert. Now, for you to be able to do that and be that person, if you want to be a leader, then you require leadership experience. It starts with you doing what you commit to do daily. But if you can't commit, then what you do is you're interested. And if you're interested, the probability of you being a leader would be slim and none. None wrote out, slim's mounting up, and your law of average is, is very, very diminished. Now, being a goal getter, this is point number five, it means you set a goal and you achieve it. Really means goal getting means goal achiever. It means you're able to achieve your goals because you have clearly defined short-term goals. You have a day goal, a week goal, a month goal, and a 90-day goal. Shorten your goals. Don't make them so big. Bring them down here where they're right in front of you and actually accomplish. Achieve and accomplish. I used to have a, I used to have a little business called AMG, Achievement Mastermind Group. Three good acronyms, AMG, Achievement Mastermind Group. And in that group, I would, I would bring together one person of like mind I started with. Then there was two. Then there was three. Then there was five. Then there was seven. That was my mastermind team that created my first multiple five-figure income. And it was those five people that became the top producers in that organization. And I would spend one hour a week mentoring those five people in a mastermind. So there'd be six of us, then eventually there were seven of us, and that, that, that's what formed the nucleus and the leadership teams, and, and that's what creates the culture, is being able to track your reality, other like-minded success seekers or people who are in alignment with you, who are in alignment with cause, meaning, and purpose, and that'll attract your reality, a different type of energy. And that's number six, point number six is vision. I am a visionary. Are you, do you have a vision of the outcome you seek to create? That's day, week, month, quarter, six months, three quarters of a year, and the year. Now, I know that 2019 is unequivocally going to be my best year. It's not a breakthrough year. I'm breaking through. Breaking through is every day for me, but breaking through means shift in philosophy, better understanding, more clarity, knowing, trusting, being conscious. That's, what, that's a daily occurrence for me. Is it for you, or do you spend most of your day in anxiety, fear, or doubt? And when you're able to separate your feelings from those low level of energies and you elevate self through esteem, meaning regard for self, your energy begins to change. As your energy changes, you attract your reality on a more frequent occlusal alignment. So the occlusal alignment means it's just like that. So you're looking down, you're looking down what is called the vanishing point. The vanishing point's the horizon line. It's way out there. And instead of it being wide, you start to narrow it in. So it's now a tunnel. Now you have a shortened vision. It's right down here. You're able to look right ahead, and you focus on results that you can create daily. It's those daily results that you create. So you may not close a sale today, but if you have five phone calls that you have five people go through a process, and they don't buy from you, and you don't personalize it, then that's more skin in the game. That's more repetition and experience. That's more ability to understand why people do what they do. There's a value proposition you receive from that kind of experience. But if you're addicted to a result and reward for recognition, then your self-confidence will be bruised. But if you have self-esteem, you won't look at it as a loss because in esteem, there is no win and lose. Esteem has no shape and form, and esteem is not developed by winning or losing. 
and it's not by reward and recognition. Esteem comes from self-love, and in that self-love, you love yourself enough not to be critical. But if you don't get a result, most people, they're highly critical of self, and then they've lost because of the way they were conditioned to behave by their parents, the educational system, team, team, team sports and situations. So this isn't about winning and losing. It's about being effective. And the more effective you become and stay, you have a much higher probability of breaking through. The last point is prosperity consciousness. Now, this is one of my favorite topics. I've actually produced audios on this. In 1995, I met the great Frederick Lehrman. He was very instrumental because I started listening to his six cassette audio series at the time called Prosperity Consciousness. And he breaks down dialogue with money. And he became someone I started to listen to and follow in the middle of my career in the mid-90s. Now, prosperity consciousness means in the flow. It means your consciousness or your awareness is you live in the flow. So energetically, you're attracting to reality people in situations that you can collaborate with frequently. And in prosperity consciousness, the parking space is available. You get upgraded to first class. The booth is available for you in the restaurant. People show up in a more frequent occlusal alignment or occurrence. And the situation you live in is Prospero in the flow. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated, on a beautiful Tuesday, mid-November. Now, we're right around the corner from Thanksgiving, one of the most grateful times of the year. So I'll be here next Tuesday right before Thanksgiving weekend. And I'll be this Saturday, Orange County, California. If you're seeking insight, wisdom, content on how to break through, let go, be more effective in your writing, speaking, and marketing endeavors, send me a Facebook message with your phone number. I will return your message responsibly in a very short period of time. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new members welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Thank you.